Hi, I'm Jamie, and welcome to the CDNFI podcast. Today I'm joined by Ben, our front-end developer, and we're going to be chatting with Eric Schofstel. Uh, Eric is the co-founder behind Fractal, along with Aaron Murray and Mike Ham, which is a consultancy working with languages like Node.js, HTML5, and NoSQL. Currently, they have over 150 open source projects, 140 of which are Node modules, but the most popular is the front-end build system, Gulp.js. Today, we're going to be chatting about the inspiration for Gulp, the community behind it, and other open source projects that Fractal are working on. So, thanks for coming along, Eric. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. So, yeah, uh, one of the things <laughs> I found that was great about Gulp um, is the uh, composable style. It's very easy to understand. Um, you take source files, run them through one or many transforms, and you get a result. Um, whereas I found with Grunt, I was having to configure objects with the same source and destination files. It basically made these 200 to 300 line configuration files that wrote to temporary directories and it basically ended up, it was a massive mess. So did you write Gulp because of the so-called Grunt hell? So short answer, yes, um, but I've got, a, I've got a really long rant behind this. Um, okay. So the, the inception point of Gulp was uh, a conversation about Grunt. Um, so we were having burgers. It was it was me and my co-founder Aaron and my good friend Taryn, uh, Taryn Jokes on Twitter. Um, and yeah, so of course we're just talking about build systems, eating, and uh, pretty much all of us were just like, we were venting, as everyone does, of just how sick we were of what we had to work with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were we were just totally fed up with like over configuration and uh, speed, especially. So uh, on the walk home, we were like talking about it, and I started thinking about you know how would I approach solving this problem. Uh, so once we got back to the apartment, I started working on a prototype, and that was that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I mean, obviously, the rest is history. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, the the upcoming of it is is an interesting story. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like we'd we'd love to we'd love to hear that. I mean, one thing that that Ben mentioned to me is uh, is grunt hell. I mean, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, is that a thing? Is that a term? Um. Yeah that that is a term that I use. Um, so. Yeah, I, I've kind of changed my, my angle on this stuff. So ju just to explain where that term came from. Uh, so after I had like the initial version of Gulp, like 0 0.2 or something, uh, I posted it on Reddit and Hacker News. And it pretty much got completely ignored. It had like 10 stars and just didn't go anywhere. Um, so a week or two later, I made a slideshow for uh, Phoenix uh, Node.js user group. And... Basically, I had like a whole section where I kind of trash talked Grunt, and that got posted, and it went from like ten to three thousand stars. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like there's there's loads of stuff out there on uh, Grunt v Gulp, and I'm I'm pretty sure it originated from that. Yeah, so I I think that the the open source community has like this inherent bloodthirst for like drama like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I you know, kind of perpetuated this in some of my early, like, talks that I gave. Uh, but I learned very quickly that tribalism is not good for open source, and I kind of have stopped doing that. Right, so it's just like, it's sort of eating away at... Is it, what, what, what would you say has, how it's affected it? Uh, how, how trash talking has affected the gold project? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it it definitely helped it gain traction quickly. I'm like that is without a doubt. Because um, yeah, I mean, just the fact that like oh, people are trash talking on Hacker News took it from zero to infinity uh, really says a lot about like what people value uh, out of open source projects. Yeah. So like, while I do feel guilty uh, about the trash talking and everything, it definitely took it to where it is now. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, Gulp handles the front end build process in a way that I mean, it automates it and it speeds up the development workflow, which um, which actually helps uh, the developer to focus on, you know, getting his head um, or her head into into writing code. Um, so it's safe to say that that performance plays a crucial role. Um, did you have this in mind when you started building Gulp? 
Yeah. So when I started Gulp, the main focus was really just like something small and easy to use. Uh, so as you know, like Grunt is very overbearing and just like big. Mm -hmm. uh, so like going from that, I just had this reaction like, oh, it's got to be so small. Like it's got to be tiny. I barely need any features out of it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, in terms of, of developer performance, uh, that's why I chose to use code over configuration. Uh, you need to be able to kind of like just do your own thing sometimes and not have to work around the system because you waste a lot of time working around the system. Um, and then, yeah, the, the actual performance benefits, not developer performance are a different thing. Uh, so, yeah, we, we do all of our transformations in memory. Mm -hmm. which allows us to run everything in parallel. And that means that build times get cut down drastically. Uh, like you can get like a, you know, a typical ground file, like on a large project, like you can see a 30 second build time and that sucks. Uh, so I think that by switching to gold, like I see stories on Twitter all the time. I watch the uh, gold JS hashtag and people just post screenshots of like time comparisons and it's like night and day. It's like 30 seconds down to one second. So I think that having a fast system uh, that you can kind of push out of your way and say, I know what I'm doing, let me handle this, uh, is crucial for, you know, a developer's workflow. Absolutely. Uh, I think one of the things with, with Gulp, though, is um, it's just its readability. Because um, you've got, I mean, I kind of got into Node.js um, through Grunt. It was sort of my first like, introduction to, to Node. And, um, and you'd have all these little config op uh, objects which would take, you know, source and destinations and, you know, make something out of it. Um, and you think, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So I can do that for, you know, minifying CSS or whatever. So you start off with that and the grunt file is very small. And then you add something else to, to uh, you know, minify JavaScript or, you know, do your documentation or, or what, whatever it might be. And you end up with this sort of massive thing. And when someone else comes to update it, they're like, they have to ask you, how, how, how does this work? Because you have to sort of maintain all these temporary directories and no one really is going to touch your build process now apart from you. Um, whereas, you know, um, Gulp's like a lot more, I think, easier to read for me because you have, you have a simple pipeline which you can, you know, it's describing the process a lot better, I think, because, um, you know, you've got a source and then you, you pipe it through transforms and then you, you, you know, you write it to a folder. So that, that to me is, is much better than having these little config options that sort of exist in their own sort of sandbox and, you know, no one really knows what they do apart from, you know, the person um, who wrote the grunt file. So yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah, I, I think that like uh, so when I when I started making Gulp, um, I was kind of like, okay, is there anything out there already that kind of like solves what I want to do? Because the idea I had in my head is a pipeline. All you're doing is pipelines of file transformations. Uh, so then I think, oh shit, Node Streams is like great for this. Um, so that's how we ended up with the stream stuff. Uh, and like you said, it, it makes it super easy to uh, go modify a pipeline. Like say I need to add a new step in. Uh, before I, you know, minify my JavaScript, I want to add something else before that. Um, in Grunt, you have to, you got to be very careful about, like, uh, the way that you have your temp folder set up and make sure that whatever you added before is, like, writing into the right temp folder and reading from the temp folder, and you just have to change a bunch of stuff around. Uh, but in Gulp, you just insert a new thing into the pipeline, and that's it. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's really good. Looking at gulpjs.com, one of the bullet points talks about uh, Gulp strict plugin guidelines. Could you just talk us through why you maintain a blacklist and what this means for people who want to build Gulp plugins? Yeah, so we we get probably like ninety nine percent praise and like one percent of people like don't like this policy. Um, so. You know, on, on NPM, you're free to publish any package you want, and I, I think that that's really important, uh, and that's one of the reasons why Node took off the way that it did. Uh, NPM is like this uh, amazing, like, chaotic anarchy in a bottle, uh, and I, I think that that's great, but 
Uh, that being said, our official website's list of plugins is like a completely different, uh, a completely different problem that we want to solve with that. So one thing we notice with other ecosystems, uh, like Grunt, for example, uh, is that they get out of control really fast. So you end up with thousands and thousands of plugins where probably 10% of them are any good. Uh, and I think that by curating these plugins, it helps beginners, uh, you know, start off. Uh, so you make sure that only the good ones are visible and that uh, those are the ones that they use. So... Yeah, we have a, a definitive set of guidelines that we use to weed out uh, different bad plugins uh, and make sure that the ecosystem stays cohesive, like everything works well together, uh, and that it stays healthy. Like we don't have uh, all these different competing plugins or anything, like two CoffeeScript plugins, for example. Um, so yeah, the blacklist basically when a plugin doesn't meet the guidelines, uh, like for example, let's say one is a duplicate of another one. Uh, we try to handle everything through GitHub issues. So we'll open an issue on uh, the duplicate and say, hey, you know, uh, there's already something for this. Why don't you just submit a pull request there if you have anything you added? Um, and, you know, that usually works out, and those two projects will merge down into one. Yeah, I suppose um, it's, it's a much easier way for people that are new to, to Gulp as well to get their head into it because they can just see all, all, the, all the main ones, you know, all, all the ones that are... Um, that aren't duplicates or aren't um, poorly written or anything like that on there? Yeah, so yeah, I, I think that the, uh, the the fact that we maintain a guideline is just, it's great for beginners and just keeping the ecosystem healthy. Um, so yeah, it, like if you aren't following the plugin spec, which is pretty simple, it's basically just uh, one, you are a stream, two, you take in these file objects, and uh, optionally, you output some file objects. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't follow that spec, we will, you know, we'll go open an issue on the repo. We'll temporarily blacklist you, and then once you fix it, you basically can just come in and you know remove yourself from the blacklist with the pull request. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that the the curation, you know, not only serves the end users, uh, you know, by having them use the right tools, but it makes sure that plugin authors are writing the right tools. Uh, so I, I think that a, a strict set of guidelines gives you, you know, a better sense of direction when you're writing plugins as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree that that's, um, that's a much better system, to be honest. I mean, uh, it's just a, an easy way to, to, you know, introduce people to Corbin, like I mentioned. Um, I mean, one thing that um, we've seen is, as time's gone on, we've seen um, the Gulp community uh, grow along with all the, the plugins as well. I think there's close to six, 600. 600 plugins, yeah, plus 600. Um, so I imagine that that's pretty amazing um, to see from your point of view. Um, what, what would you say is actually the most inspiring thing um, that you've seen whilst collaborating with the, with the Gulp community? Uh, I would say the dedication to quality. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but for some reason we attracted like a ton of perfectionists. Um, so like I'm, I'm an extremely picky project maintainer and you know, the fact that people have been able to put up with that has been really great. Like when I get a pull request, I'll go back and forth with the person until the code pretty much looks like something that I would have written. Mm -hmm. Um, and like we, I spend a lot of time and I'm very thorough with, uh, GitHub issues. So, yeah, the, the type of people that that style attracted, uh, you know, they have a very fine attention to detail, so I think they, they understand where I'm coming from. Uh, so having, like, hundreds of perfectionists working together uh, to solve a problem uh, is super cool. Uh, so, yeah, I think attracting the right people is, is really important in building a community, and I'm just, like, super proud of, you know, everybody we have in ours. Awesome. Um so what are the open source projects you're working on that you're excited about right now? Yeah, so I have, a, I have some cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm doing some, some uh, genome analysis, uh, which is basically I'm trying to make like an open source version of 23andMe, where any amateur can just go and analyze uh, their genome and do cool stuff with it. Uh, like, for example, you could... Uh, get your genome sequence and then input it in like generate a 3D model of what it thinks you look like, like your face or something. Oh, that's cool. uh, or see like if you have risks for different diseases. Um, 
for example, like my just looking at my DNA with some analysis tools that I wrote, uh, I found out that I'm immune to norovirus, which means that like I can't get that type of food poisoning, which is super cool. Because uh, now I don't have to worry about eating like shitty tacos that some guy cooked. In the <laughs> it, it opened a lot of doors, uh, I would say. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that project is is called Genome JS. Uh, that's at genomejs.com, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm hoping to have some more time to put in on that. Um, so yeah, we we do like a t- we've got a ton of open source projects going on right now. Uh, but we're, we're pretty busy with product stuff I can't really talk about, but I, I try to do fun stuff on the side, so. No, yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, like I sent you the, I emailed you those code pens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw, we saw those. I saw the, kale- uh, the kaleidoscope. It was, it was amazing, that was, actually. That was very, yeah, very trippy. I mean, I've, 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 uh, I've been tr- trying this, uh, get user media, um, recently, and, um, uh, for, you know, for one of the, the projects we're working on, um, and it is it is pretty cool that uh, you know you, like a few years ago you'd have to use Flash to achieve the same thing, and and all of a sudden you you know you can sort of you know transform audio and video like directly with JavaScript's uh, APIs, which is it's just amazing. But yeah, yeah, and the animation stuff too is crazy. So uh, yeah, I've I've been on a code. Kick, uh, code pen kick lately um, so yeah I, the links that I sent were uh, I tried to make a canvas polyfill for Internet Explorer 6 that was based on a table <laughs> full of, of one by one cells with wow. no border or padding and then you would individually change the background color of each cell <laughs> the table that's amazing so uh, it's safe to say that's not a good idea. It was like, oh man, the performance was so bad on it. Like I'm sure it could be optimized, but it was it was a bad idea. Uh, but it was it was pretty fun. Uh, and then yeah, that the psychedelic WebRTC kaleidoscope uh, with the ever changing CSS filters and young lean videos playing in the background. Yeah, yeah, it was and it was so really good. I find that it's it's amazing that. It, the performance on changing the background color of a table is horrible, but I can do a kaleidoscope of like a hundred live streaming HD videos uh, with CSS filters and like you know different layering effects and everything. The code um, wasn't too big uh, either, was it? It was very, it was very minimal actually. Um, yeah. So I, I I find it weird that like. You know, changing the background color of a table is so slow, but like I can do all this crazy stuff with uh, all of these newer APIs. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm having a lot of fun uh, playing with some of the new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think I think that's that's, um, that's it. So it's been a it's been a pleasure talking to you, Eric. Um, I mean, personally, I, I can't wait to to see what happens next with with Gulp. Um, so thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Cool. Thanks for having me. Uh, Gold 4 hopefully is coming out at the end of this month, so look forward to that. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. See you guys.